Bem, o que tem a Austrália, a cara de Timor-Leste, sai na ação e não é economicamente resiliente. A Austrália Moça apoia na FATE em Timor-Leste, a tua acelera, projeto Greater Sunrise. Ministra de Negócios Estrangeiros da Austrália, a tua assunto, né? E a entrevista hoje é mesmo. Tu irmã, te acompanha a entrevista completa. Thank you very much for giving us your time to do this interview. It's really good to be with you. Let me just start with a simple question. What's Canberra's message to Timor-Leste this time? We, we are a friend, we are a neighbour, we share a region and we share a future. That's my simple message. Uh, and that means working together to achieve the, a future for Timor-Leste and for our region that we both want. And what's the response of Timor-Leste to that? Oh, well, obviously, I've been very grateful for the, the courtesy and the warmth with which I've been received um, by you know, my counterpart, Minister Magno, by the President, Ramos Horta, uh, pri the Prime Minister. Uh, we've had a very good, we're very good discussions. Look, I'm very conscious that uh, for COVID and for other reasons, um, we haven't had as much engagement here. Uh, the new Albanese Labor government sees this as a very important relationship. We are very focused on the region. This is not my first visit and it certainly won't be my last. This is your second visit. So what have you seen in Dili? Um, what's different now mm. in your view? That's a good question. Um, they've taken the graffiti off Cristo Rey, I saw. It's, it's cleaner now. Um, the statue. Uh, look, I, I think the yeah. we 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 want to do more uh, in this relationship for uh, to work with the government of Timor Leste for your economic resilience. We we want to see a a stable country, a secure country, a resilient country, and that goes to economic resilience as well as democratic resilience. You know, your sovereignty was hard won. Uh, and uh, we want to work with you um, to strengthen, strengthen that. So uh, I, I met with some really uh, interesting women this morning, uh, and some of them I met with when I was here in 2017, uh, and many of them were talking about the same sorts of issues, which is how do we encourage economic diversification, how do we support women in micro-businesses, how do we, uh, what can we do to make the economy more resilient. COVID has affected Timor-Leste so harshly. Um, we went to the stage where we felt that uh, there was a sense of economic collapse mm. and also the health sector was mm. really struggling. Um, now that it's, it's quite over, um, with the recovery it's going to be hard for Timor uh, compared to many other countries. What is Australia um, prepared to do to help? Well, is Australia standing next to Tim, uh, beside Timor Leste in, in the process of recovery? And what is um, Australia preparing to do to uh, help? Well, f first, we, we, you're right, COVID uh, affected all of us. But for a country like Timor Leste, it, it is, it, had an even greater effect on your economy and your health system. We, we were really aware of that. Um, that's why Australia provided 1.2 million vaccines to Timor-Leste to try and lessen the impact. But there's a, a lot more to do. Um, one of the things that has been really good uh, in this visit is to be able to listen and to hear some of the priorities from your ministers and from some of the, the people with whom I've met um, uh, obviously, we provide, uh, I think it's about a, just over $100 million a year in development assistance across a whole range of sectors, health, education, uh, some infrastructure, uh, agriculture, industry. Um, I announced today uh, an additional $20 million, uh, which will go to um, three things, community-based infrastructure in the villages, Bosa de Mai, so the uh, provision to uh, pregnant mothers uh, and um, young young mothers of babies of, of additional payments. Obviously you have a, a really sad uh, child 
uh, health issue that we, we want to work with you on and some skills development for people going to Australia for um, the labour movement schemes. So that's a small example of what we want to do together. But what's the big picture? Where do we want to be in 10 or 20 years? We want a team of Leste that is more economically resilient because that, um, you know, that, that's part of your independence. Uh, and we will work with you on, on your priorities and be a partner in that uh, and listen and discuss how we, uh, uh, how the best way through. With the Pacific Labour Scheme, one of the greatest challenges Timor has is um, compared to the other Pacific countries, um, there's a significant lack of skills on the Timorese mm -hmm. uh, part. Um, to the future, what would Australia consider extending or expanding the program to preparing or enhancing the skills of the Timorese before they take on the jobs mm -hmm. in Australia? Because that one of the problems Timor has every year is that we never, we could never um, respond to the demand of the number of uh, workers that yeah. is requested. Yeah, so that's a really good question and it's a really good point. I'd make a couple of points. The f first is, uh, we, we went to the election as a uh, Labor Party with a, uh, a commitment to uh, improve and expand our labour movement schemes. We're really conscious that they provide a, an important economic opportunity for the countries who uh, provide labour remittances, but also the opportunity for skills. I'm very keen to see if we can do more in making sure that experience of coming to Australia before and during uh, also involves a, a lifting of people's skills. Uh, that's an investment in people, not, not only in the remittances that come back. This was something your president spoke to me about in, in some detail. It's obviously a very important part of your economic resilience. Part of the $20 million we've announced is for uh, some skills programs pre-departure, uh, and we will look at, in, in, in partnership with uh, the Timor-Leste government, how we might build on that. I think it's a, a, an area where we can really use this opportunity uh, for greater benefit for the Timorese people. President Ramazorta has mentioned that when he visits Australia, he might talk about the offshore gas uh, development. What would be the position of the Australian government in, in that? So I came here in 2017 as an opposition <coughs> spokesperson with a, with a political position, a policy position that said Australia should agree to conciliate uh, to conciliation before the, um, uh, under the UNCLOS to resolve the boundary. Uh, and I did that for a number of reasons. One of them was our relationship. But secondly, we understand how important um, Greater Sunrise is to Timor Leste economically, particularly given um, by Yuen Dun uh, and uh, the term of that project. Uh, and I hoped if we could, if the two countries could resolve it, bearing in mind we weren't in government, that we could progress, the, pro the project could progress. Uh, in the five years since I was last there here, I don't think there has been much progress. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's a problem. Um, it, it appears to be stuck. So we, we need to work together to understand and find a way through. I would make the, I would just um, emphasise the Australian government is not a party to the joint venture project, and the joint venture, the joint venture parties will have to agree for the project to proceed. Uh, but we'd like to uh, work together to see if we can find a way through. In relation to that, uh, there has been media coverage that hinted indications that Timor Leste might uh, prefer to have a closer relationship with China rather than Australia. Uh, especially if the development of the offshore gas um, project uh, goes too slow. Um, and therefore, your visit is perceived as a counter-diplomacy to that. What comment can you make on that? I'm here because the relationship matters to us, and I'm here because we're a friend. Not here because of anybody else. And, you know, we, we've... 
we may not always have done what you know, the Timorese people might have wanted. But you, know, you might, I would say to you that Australia's involvement uh, and in Interfet uh, and um, you know, in the early 2000s uh, and the contribution of Australian personnel to keeping peace, to enable that transition to independence uh, and the resilience of an independent nation. There's a lot of friendship uh, that comes from that, a lot of history and a lot of trust. And you know, it's something Australians are really proud of. Yeah, and that's why we're also invested uh, in your country, emotionally and politically invested, because we have invested in your independence. Um, and what we want for you is, is you know, for your sovereign decisions uh, to be enabled uh, and to in, in ensure that your country is resilient. On uh, decisions about relations with others or investment by others, you know, those are matters ultimately for the Timorese government of the day. What I would say is, when we come, we come because we want to strengthen your sovereignty. You know, we don't come telling you, we, we don't come trying to use that leverage we come because we, we share in your objectives and because we share the region. And we see our future in this region and our security in this region. If Timor-Leste indeed end up working with China on, on this project, for instance, would that have any effect in the relationships between the two countries and the two people? No, we still share our history, our, our, our geography and our future. Well, yeah, that, that, that never changes. Um, I think the question that, that Timor-Leste would, would, what would rightly be needing to consider is you know, whether those sorts of decisions strengthen your resilience and your sovereignty. And that's ultimately a matter for you. In the Labour's government view, what future does it want Timor Leste and Australia to have? Well, we want for your future what you want for your future. You want a, an economically resilient country. You want a country that's secure, that's stable. That's what we want.